I'm Paris Demers, a personal trainer with over a decade of experience in the gym, and these are the three steps Christian Bale took to get into amazing shape for American Psycho. I'll be breaking them down and explaining each one in detail so you can transform yourself just like he did. Then at the end of the video, I'll be providing you with a full workout plan that you can follow to build a physique that any psychopath would be jealous of. So step number one that Christian Bale took to get into crazy good shape for American Psycho, and this is an insanely important one for you to take as well, he set a realistic goal and he had a powerful internal motivating force pushing him along. So nowadays, we can't imagine anyone but Bale playing Patrick Bateman, but it wasn't always clear he was going to get the job. After auditioning for the role of the intense investment banker with a murderous streak, Bale realized that to properly portray the character, he was going to need to hit the gym and bulk up, and that's something that Bale had never really needed to do before. And actually, before American Psycho, he'd never even set foot in a gym. So Bale hired a personal trainer and started hitting the gym hard, but at this point, he had only tried out for the leading role of American Psycho. He hadn't actually landed it yet. After Bale auditioned, Auditioned. Director and screenwriter Mary Heron really wanted him for the role, but the studio wasn't on board. In May 1998, Lionsgate offered Leonardo DiCaprio over $20 million for the role instead of Bale. But Mary Heron, the director and screenwriter, really went to bat for Bale and refused to do the movie with DiCaprio. For a short time, both Bale and Heron were off of the movie, while Lionsgate moved forward with Leo and the newly hired Oliver Stone as the director. But even during that time, Bale didn't stop hitting the gym. He knew he was the only man who could play Patrick Bateman, and he knew that if he even wanted to stand a chance at stealing it from Leo, then he was going to have to be in the best shape of his life. Here's a quote from Bale about his insane dedication to the movie. The person he's referring to in this quote is the director. I'm still going to make this, and I'm going to keep prepping on it. And I would call her to talk about scenes, and she'd be on a family vacation and she'd say, Christian, please, I'm trying to have dinner. And I don't know if you've noticed, but there's other people making the film now. And I'd say, Mary, just stop being so negative. We're gonna do this. Everyone thought I was crazy because it became a crusade for me. And as we all know, all of Bale's crusading eventually paid off. DiCaprio and Stone eventually left the project, and Bale and Heron were back on. This wouldn't have happened if Bale didn't set a realistic goal, create a plan to achieve it, and if he didn't have a powerful motivating force pushing him through adversity. And that's the exact same thing that you need to do when you're either starting your fitness journey or about to start a new phase of hard training and dieting. You need to start by setting a realistic, specific goal, then creating an actionable plan to get you there. If your goal is too vague or too lofty, you'll have a hard time staying motivated along the way because you'll either be disappointed by your slow but steady results, or you won't even realize that you're seeing results because you didn't set up a way to measure your progress. So always start by setting a goal that is smart, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. Comment your goals down below and I'll help you out by telling you if they're realistic. Now that you have a good goal, you need to take a look inside yourself and figure out why you want to achieve that goal. You better have a good reason because pretty much anything that's worth achieving is going to take a shitload of work. So you need to have a powerful sense of purpose that'll push you forward and stop you from quitting when things get tough. Christian Bell wrote in his book that he hated training for American Psycho. He found it insanely boring and a chore, but because he was on a crusade to get the role of Patrick Bateman, quitting just wasn't an option for him. So spending all those hours grinding away in the gym were more than worth it. You need to find your own reason to go on an unstoppable crusade of self-improvement. Do you want to get into shape to gain the confidence needed to excel at work or in the dating scene? Do you want to lose weight and get healthy because you want to be around to see your children's children grow up? Or do you want to become the type of athlete like Arnold Schwarzenegger that will inspire millions to better themselves? Take some time and figure out why you want to achieve your goal and have that powerful reason in the back of your mind for the times when things get tough and you feel like quitting. Now, by the way, I've partnered with a supplement brand that Joe Rogan co-founded called Onnit to bring you guys some free performance boosting supplements. So go check out the links in the description down below to get yours for free. So step two, Bale cultivated mass. Like I said, before American Psycho, Christian Bale had never even set foot in a gym. So he was going to need to bulk up and pack on some serious muscle so that he could later shed it off and create the final physique that we see in American Psycho. Bale had this to say about his training for the movie. He would train six days a week for three hours a day with a personal trainer. He ate an awful lot during training and then almost nothing during filming. This sounds like a classic bodybuilding physique building strategy of bulking and then cutting. And there's a reason it's such a classic strategy, because it's the fastest way to build an awe-inspiring physique, but only if you do it right. Do it wrong, and you'll just end up getting fat during your bulk, and then lose all of your muscle mass during your cut. So I'm going to tell you the right way to bulk up. 
Of course, the goal with bulking is to eat more calories than your body burns each day to create a surplus of calories, aka energy, that your body will then use to build muscle. But the trick is, your body can only put on muscle so quickly, so you can't just eat as much of whatever you want and expect it all to become muscle. In fact, there are some studies like this one from Garth and colleagues that shows if you overfeed athletes who are training four days a week by an extra 600 calories, almost all of that extra food and energy turns into fat with very little additional muscle gain. So there's big diminishing returns when it comes to creating a huge calorie surplus. So here's the super simple way to bulk up that I use with my clients, and it works amazing for people who've only been consistently weight training for less than two years. Start by eating three to four balanced whole food meals each day. For each balanced meal, you'll want to make sure you have a source of lean protein, veggies, healthy fats, and starchy carbs on your plate. And you want to make sure these food sources are processed as little as possible. Here's a list of great choices for each food group. Feel free to pause the video and take a screenshot or write these down. For these three to four meals, you want to spread them out across the day as much as possible. And for each meal, you want to eat until you're fairly full. Since the goal of bulking is to gain size and muscle, you're probably going to have to be eating more than you're used to. But how do you make sure you're not gaining too much weight or that you're gaining enough weight at all? Well, for someone who's relatively new to training hard and consistently, you'll want to gain around 0.5% of your overall body mass per week during a bulk. And the typical bulk will last for 8 to 30 weeks, depending on how much muscle you need to put on. So what you want to do to track your progress is weigh yourself every 3 to 4 days at the same time of day, preferably in the morning before you've eaten anything and then average the weight gain across the weeks. If in a given two week period during a bulk, you've gained more or less than 0.5% of your overall body mass per week, then increase or decrease the amount you're eating accordingly. But of course, bulking isn't just about eating. You're actually gonna need to train to create the stimulus to build muscle. I won't spend too much time on this point because I've actually went ahead and created a full free training plan for you guys designed to build you the same type of physique that Bale had for American Psycho. And you can grab that at the end of the video. But here are two insanely important points that you need to know when it comes to building muscle. And they are, you need to be training hard and you need your training to get harder over time. The easiest way to make sure that you're actually training hard enough in the gym to build muscle is by using a difficulty measuring system called reps in reserve, also known as RIR. Reps in reserve is simply measuring how many reps you have left in the tank at the end of a set. To build muscle effectively, you'll want to make sure you have no more than three good reps left in you at the end of any set. So while you're following the program I'm going to give you at the end of the video, you'll want to choose weights that leave you with only three or less good good reps left in the tank at the end of every set. As you train and get stronger, you'll find the weights that used to leave you with three reps in reserve at the end of a set of 12 now leaves you with four to five. That means it's time to go up in weight so you can keep building muscle. Now onto step three, Christian Bale got ripped. And if you're gonna get ripped, you're gonna have to head to the gym. And if you're gonna head to the gym, you're gonna need some badass workout clothes. And that's where my partners over at SuperX come in. They make the world's most badass workout apparel. You can think of them as Lululemon meets Marvel. They have tons of different designs, so you'll be sure to find something that matches your style. They've got hundreds of thousands of customers all across the globe, with thousands of five-star reviews, so you know it's really good stuff. I've been working out in my SuperX gear for months now, and I'm loving it. Not only is it super comfortable, but thanks to its form-fitting design, it makes me look super jacked. So by this point, you're sold, and you want your own super suit. Well, all you have to do is follow the link in my description, or go to www.superx.co and use promo code DEMERS for 20% off your first order. It's a great way to support the channel while getting some world-class workout gear. Now back to the video. So like Bale said in that quote, during his training, he ate a whole lot, then during the filming, he ate very little. Now that makes sense as Bale needed to get super lean and then stay super lean for the movie. But how did he cut down and get so lean? To cut down so far, Bale went on a high protein, high healthy fat, low carb, and zero sugar diet. And Bale has actually said that getting lean for American Psycho was much harder than bulking up for Batman Begins. Even though for Batman Begins, he had to gain about 100 pounds. Now if you want me to do a video all about how he bulked up and gained 100 pounds for his first outing as the Dark Knight, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment Batman Begins down below. But I actually wouldn't recommend doing the high fat, low carb diet that Bale did for cutting down. Because while you're cutting down after a bulk, your number one goal after losing fat is to preserve as much muscle mass as possible. See, to lose body fat, you need to be eating fewer calories than you're burning each day. So that makes your body make up for the difference by burning body fat. But when your body experiences a drop in energy intake like this, it's going to look to start making budget cuts. And muscle is the first thing that's going to be on the chopping block. So to give your body as many reasons as possible to hold onto the muscle mass that you've built during your bulk, you're going to need to continue lifting weights. 
And going back to what I said earlier about not liking Bale's low carb diet, I'm not a fan because carbs are your muscle's main fuel source. So if you cut them all out, you're gonna have close to zero energy for your workouts, meaning you'll end up training less and at a lower intensity, which leads to your body having little reason to hold on to all those beautiful muscles that you've built during your bulk. By the way, you can find the full free workout program PDF down in the description. So instead, what you should do during a cut is keep your protein really high, around one gram per pound of body mass per day and drop your carbs and fats evenly until you start to lose weight. You don't want to drop your carbs too low because then you'll notice a drop off in performance at the gym and you don't want to drop your fats too low because fats are essential to maintaining proper hormone levels like testosterone. And just like for the bulk, you don't want your cut to go too fast or too slow. You'll want to lose right around 0.5 to 1% of your overall body mass per week. You'll want to lose it a little bit slower if you're already really lean and a little bit faster if you have a good amount of weight to lose. But how should you track your food to make sure that you're actually hitting that kind of weight loss goal? Well, I made a full video about tracking and how to get abs and that'll tell you everything you need to know. So go check that out and we'll continue the lesson there.